Hello folks. I have a little bit of time this afternoon to uh, make another video here, a scam tutorial video. Um, just the basics is what I'm going to stick to for now. Um, if I can even keep doing these, we'll see how it goes. But I thought I would talk about scenarios. When I was first learning SKM, that was something um, I understood what it was for, but I didn't know how to do it, and I didn't know what some of the things within the scenario manager, what those meant. But uh, why would you want to have scenario different scenarios? Well, maybe you've got different available fault current, uh, maybe a normal operation or maximum or minimum available fault current from the utility, or maybe you want to do a different scenario with the load emergency loads on the generator or not right now you can see that uh, the transfer switch is in the normal so if i run this study all it's going to do is calculate the downstream of this transfer switch fault currents and arc flash incident energy based upon the transfer switch being in the normal position so let's uh see what we can do but with the scenario manager that is up here under project scenario manager i'm going to create a scenario and i have to decide whether or not i want to promote the base changes to unmodified scenario fields or not promote not to promote the changes what that means is do you want to automatically change your scenario anytime you change something in the base if it hadn't been modified in the scenario or do you never want to change and you want the scenario just to be the scenario and you don't want to change it so let's um just make it another scenario here i'll, I'll demonstrate do not promote base changes so i'm going to clone the base project and i'm going to rename this to do not Remote changes. And I'm going to go there. So I've got the new scenario. You can see my scenario up here in the upper left. Do not promote changes. Let me get a one line up here. Uh, let's do our main drawing. In fact, I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to go back to the base scenario. And let's make a change and see if it changes it in the scenario. I'm going to change this generator to instead of 150 kW, let's change it to 75. Let's change to 75. I'm going to save it. And since I did not promote the changes, to the scenarios my uh, do not promote changes scenario should still be 150 and it is 150 it didn't change it so what if I decide oh I do want to change promote the change from the base to this all the scenarios Let's go back to the base scenario. And I decided, well, shucks, I've made all these different changes here. And I wish I would have had those automatically put into the scenario. So I don't have to go in and possibly make a mistake changing them one by one. So then you can go back to project, promote scenarios, promote components. And I want to change the generator. I'm going to hit OK. Now, when I go to that uh, do not promote changes scenario, it should be changed to 75 from 150. And it is. Okay, now you can see how that works. So let's go back to our scenario manager and delete that back to my base project i'm going to make another one i'm going to rename it no i messed up already i want to promote changes so i need to make sure i have promote changes so in here 
and clone it and rename it. No changes. You wouldn't normally have a scenario called promote changes or not. You, you, I'm talking scenario should be like utility source one or load on utility one, load on utility two, load on generator. Those are the kinds of things that you would have scenarios for. Yeah, we need to get it back to our one line. That's 75 kW, which should be what we still have in our base scenario. So we'll go back to the base. And I'm going to change it back to 150. Save. Now when I go to that promote changes scenario, it, uh, it should automatically be changed to 150. Let's see if it is. It is. It did change it. Now let's do uh, what the actual purpose of these scenarios are. So I'm going to go back to the base scenario and I'm going to run my short circuit. I don't know. I haven't run this in a while. I don't know if I have errors or not. I don't have any errors, so that, errors, so that seemed to have worked. We'll do an arc flash study. Federal comprehensive, the latest 1584. I'm going to allow for the two second rule. Fuses will be as they're specified. That's okay. I'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, I've only got one scenario run here. It's the base scenario. So I don't have any notes over here that's talking about S, S0 or S1 or anything like that. So let's go back to our scenario manager. And I'm going to make another scenario. Say, do not promote the base changes. Clone it. And I'm going to rename this. Load on generator. I'm going to go to that one. One line, I'm going to open up both my one lines. And I want to change the position of this transfer switch to be actually first let's make sure I'm in I'm one load on generator that's up here in the upper left that's what I want and I want to change my switch position to emergency okay which it has done that hopefully it automatically changed it in my other one line near my generator one line yes it did change it so I can run another for circuit study I don't have any errors that now everything downstream of this transfer switch just got calculated being fed by the generator and I can run the arc flash study here or I'll do it again in the I'll go back to the base area but now that this just ran everything in the position with the uh, load on the generator let's go back to our base scenario and it should have the transfer switch in the normal position, normal, normal power. And it does. It should be that way here on our other diagram, and it is. So let's do our arc flash study. Fault current report options. I want to do the worst case including the scenario. So I want my base 
scenario and I want my load on generator scenario. Worst case selected and load on generator. Okay. So it should be looking at that scenario even though I'm up here in my base project it should look at that load on generator scenario. We'll see if there's any differences when I get the report done. We can see now in my report I've got all these S zeros and S2 notes. The S0 is my base project and the S2 is the load on generator project. So there should only be note twos on anything that uh, associated with the emergency loads or anything downstream of that transfer switch. So I can see that uh, yes under my load on generator scenario, scenario two, ATS load side, my incident energy, it, it's still very low, 0.26 calories, but that must be a little bit higher than it was under the base scenario only. And then the same with the, the uh, oh, these are which device it's protecting it by, or protected by. That's a different subject. Um, so S0 would be the one base project, and S2 or generator, load on generator, where it turned out to be a higher incident energy. Let's see if we can remember those, the 0.26 and the 0.482. I'm going to rerun the study. I'm sorry, I need to go get out of it, rerun it this way. Report options. I only want the current scenario run, which is the base. I forgot to check this worst case only. That's why I was getting double readings on my report there. This is definitely lower. It was point four point something there. That was point two six before I think. I don't know, but you can see I I really should have done a screen capture or something and looked at compared them all. I I don't know off the top of my head why that one may have changed to the work to a little bit higher, even though it's very low. And this one was definitely significantly different. But I don't have any S zeros and S twos here because of uh, I only ran the current scenario. Now let's talk about another way of doing different scenarios. Definitely you want to use the scenario manager for your your studies but sometimes let's say you want to just do a quick check and you, you don't want to have to flip back and forth between all your scenarios. I saw this in one of the gear manufacturer studies that one of the gear guys did um, on different levels of available fault current from the utility. So right now this one was very specific. I had 6600 amps in a very specific X over R ratio three, with three phase and line to ground. And my base voltage was 1247. But at, uh, let's say I want to do a kind of a, a maximum and see what that does to my short circuit currents. Just as a check. Actually, well, I'll go ahead and create those. I want to clone these utilities. And let's say I want uh, this one to be infinite bus so it's maxed out it's assuming the utility contribution is infinite I'm restricted only by the impedance of this transformer 
I'm going to call that uh, Util Infinite Bus. And let's say the utility told me, hey, this 6620 is a minimum, but you could see a maximum of, oh, say, uh, 15,000 amps. We'll just say that. Keep XL over R the way it was. Call that Sysmax. And I'm going to keep my eye on some of these values downstream here when I run these. Um, let's see. Let me move this over here so you can see. This I'm just doing, let's say I'm, I'm just specking equipment right now. This is a new design and I want to make sure I have adequate AIC ratings. This might be one reason why you, you might want to do these scenarios this way. Well, obviously I'm not going to have all three of these utilities at the same in operation at the same time. But my base scenario, I can see my MDP here. I had 18,000 amps maximum available at 6600 at the utility contribution so I could in theory use a 22k panel board for this MDP I think that's a, a standard value that's available for 208 volt I'm going to take this out of service and I'm going to take my my utility max out of service and I'm just going to run this on the infinite bus and see if it changes it. it. It should change it somewhat, but probably not super significantly. But we'll see. And it bumped that up by a thousand amps. That's all. Right at the secondary, though, that was, I didn't pay attention to that. I'm getting knocked down by this long transformer secondary. Um, let's redo that. I'm going to take this out of service. Put this back in service. And see what that did. Or what, what this was before and what it is now. Because I don't remember. I'll run it again. 28,000 I guess it knocked it down by a couple thousand amps by having an infinite bus um, utility which by the which is what I would probably want to run if I'm just specking equipment out um, not for purposes of doing arc flash studies for arc flash studies you want the most accurate utility information that you can but if you're if it's a new job and you're wanting to spec AIC and, and SCCR ratings at, that you definitely know will be adequate then I would probably would run that do a scenario where I'm, I'm using infinite bus and I would have all the motors on for to get the motor contribution but this is a just kind of an easy way to, to check things um, without having to use the scenario manager for that 20 minutes, I'm at 19 minutes, almost 20 minutes. That's long enough on scenarios. I'm going to try to keep these videos shorter because I, myself, I don't like to watch long, long videos. Um, so hopefully that wraps it up and was helpful. Please let me know if, what you, if you like this video and if you want to see other topics in the comments, I'd appreciate it.